Waking up nicely. It's the Drew and Fuse Show. The Drew and Fuse Show. The Drew and Fuse Show. You have to clean up nicely. Hello, welcome to the Drew and Fuse show. We are here with our friend Flips today. If you guys don't know Flips, why don't you? And you can go <laughs> listen to him on one of our earlier episodes where we talk about yep. all kinds of stuff as well. We're back with another music episode today. So uh, we're going to talk a little music and uh, do a little rant, talk a little tips, all that good stuff. Drew, anything you got from this weekend so far? You know, this weekend was pretty basic for me. Uh, typical typical typicals but uh, you know i did want to bring up i had uh the drummer from sugar ray was at uh, one of my private Ooh. events his wife just kept asking me for you know 90s hip-hop and just random stuff anyways then they come up with the play some sugar ray everyone's gonna love it i just always think like if you have someone famous in your your thing do you play their songs is that uh is that like a a thing because everyone did go crazy for a, a nice little Sugar A medley, but I just found it funny that they want to hear their own shit, you know? How many songs did you play, like, on the set? Sugar well, A songs. It. <laughs> well, it was it was an older crowd, so I I was doing 90s a lot, of okay. 90s and 80s, and then, so I, I led it into with Third Eye Blind, Smash Mouth, into Sugar Ray. so it was kind of like all the bands that probably toured together pretty well, and then um, I did Fly, Every Morning, and Somebody. Someday, ah, someday, yeah, go. just pretty quick. I mean, those are their hits, right? I don't know much more that they got. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. <laughs> right, when it's over, <laughs> what would you do uh, so someday? And and Why? ironically enough, probably all the ones that he, the drummer's not on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, it's all a drum machine. Uh, anyways, I just thought it was funny. He was all hyped and trying to get him to do a drop for the show, and he just fucking vanished. Oh, I was trying to get him to. To go back and forth with the Mark McGrath drop that we got, but he, he bounced on me. Anyways, it was fun. It was a good event. But yeah. I'm just wondering if people come up, is that a go to for you guys? It's like, oh, yeah, they're here. Let me just play their catalog or like, let me just run through it real quick. Mm. Yeah, no, I think I wait. I wait until someone asks for it just because I, I, I feel like they don't want to hear this stuff sometimes. But then I maybe if it's a, a newer artist, they might want to hear it just because they just probably want to see how people react to it in the club. Right. But I'm sure someone that's maybe in their 40s or 50s that has, has been doing it for a while is like, I don't want to hear that. You know, they've played it so many times. Right. Yeah. That's how I feel. I usually wait. I would wait till somebody would bring it up. That somebody being like them. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you got my track. Oh, it, it was, uh, I also did this other club and O3 Greedo comes in fairly regularly and he's always sending somebody up to play his shit. Um, and then instantly when I go into it, I have the manager going, what the fuck is this? Change it. It's too <laughs> slow. <laughs> so, yeah, there you go. Um, what you, would you do this weekend, Flips? Uh, so I'll start with Thursday. Thursday, I just had this like quick happy hour gig that was like 5 to 6.30. And then we actually went out and watched Deadpool, my, me and my wife. So we watched that on Thursday after the gig. Friday, I didn't have a gig, but we went, me and a good friend went to the Creed concert. <laughs> oh, <laughs> really? Yeah, I've got to hold that, you know, <laughs> can't, can't, be, can't be posting it and not going. <laughs> you know, um, so How it was... was it? Uh, it was great. Um, it was Finger Eleven, who we didn't catch, Three Doors Down, and then uh, Creed, and they rocked it. It was it was it was it wasn't at our arena. It was more at the one of those like outdoor venues where there are seats that are covered, but then there's a lawn. Yeah. Uh, but they were sending out emails like we've never gotten emails. I think from this venue saying like it's gonna be sold out, get here early type of thing. So they started sending that stuff out, and definitely like took a while to get in uh it was great i mean honestly i went to hear like four or five songs the, probably the four or five songs that we all know and they saved those till the end for the most part and uh they killed it i haven't uh, had a chance to post um from it on my stories yet so I, i'll post those probably today because i need to do some catch up 
But he he did great. I mean, he um he was awesome. Did they lift him up? Did they lift him up? Did he fly? Did <laughs> yeah. Jesus pose? He, he didn't fly, but I, I he definitely <laughs> had. I even showed my wife uh, last night. He definitely had these like poses <laughs> that if you, if you were watching, he would just laugh because it's just he's this like stuck in the '90s rock kind of like epic. Yeah. How- standing poses so that uh it was great though great show people singing along uh uh saturday night at a small wedding it was about 40 people uh do, do you ever have those kind of weddings where it's like under yeah 50? yeah and i so, get them all the time they're they could be the most fun weddings of all time as long uh-huh. as uh people are in right right if it's just like family and random then it's like how fast can we leave <laughs> right exactly but, so yeah it ended up being pretty good um it went till 11 but i would say like you know the majority of that 40 people had left by 10 uh but the bride and groom were actually staying on property so like it was them and like their wedding party so i just ended up playing the extra hour of what I, well i mean i was contracted for that hour right uh but i just playing their requests and like whatever they wanted to hear because you know they rented out the venue they paid for me they paid for the photo booth so just ended up staying till another hour uh, and then yesterday went back to that uh, venue we went to on Friday, and last night we saw Limp Biscuit. I've never seen Limp Biscuit. <laughs> Dang, so, the divorced dad rock tour. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. pretty much. Um, so this point, divorce. It's actually called Loserville. <laughs> it's the Loserville tour. And uh, you know, is it Corey Feldman opening for them right now? Is who? Corey Feldman, I'm pretty yes. sure, is opening for yes. Limp Bizkit. Yeah. So Corey Feldman opened, and then I didn't know the other two artists, um, but then I think Riff Raff was there also. Wow. Uh, but I don't know anything about Riff Raff other than, you know, just who he is. Uh, but Corey Feldman definitely opened, and then uh, – Did you catch did- any of that? No, I didn't. Corey Feldman? Oh, man. That was, no. I would have been there early just for the Corey <laughs> Feldman part. Yeah, we, we weren't really sure what to expect. and then, um, But, yeah, Limp Bizkit went on, and they did a great show, to be honest. I mean, if you know – I mean, I think for the most part, we probably know most of their songs, whether you know you listen to them still or not. Uh, but they did a great show, too. I mean, I, I'm coming after out of COVID, even though it was a couple of years ago. It was like anytime there's a show that of someone that I haven't seen, I try to go and watch them. Uh, you know, just just because, you know, it's especially some of these artists and bands that like are coming out of nowhere, like Creed and Limp Bizkit, for, for instance, just because, you know, you, you don't know. You don't know when they're either, either ever going to perform again or if they're going to ride this wave and go every year. So, yeah, right. Oh, man. The yeah, Limp Bizkit stuff's crazy. <laughs> I, I It was. It's like just wild. They they were so big. Like they did the they they were one of the, like the headliners for the. um what what was the the documentary uh, um Woodstock Woodstock the like Woodstock oh 90, yeah 99. 97 yep. or, or 99 yeah yeah yep. and uh they were like a headliner and just huge and then it was like nobody cared for a while now it's like all of a yeah. sudden they're just back and as big as ever probably this, this nostalgia and then you know with the how the state of music is right now there's not too many artists i think that are like them or even like creed or that kind of rock i mean i think a lot of that stuff's coming back so price you know streaming and all that kind of stuff too mm-hmm. yeah <clears throat> uh, if you haven't you should definitely check out the divorce dad rock playlist on spotify <laughs> <laughs> pretty funny is there, is there nickel back on it <laughs> it's like all that stuff it's like all oh, like good the, okay it's like Creed, Three Doors Down, like all just all that that like late '90s, early 2000s rock. Have you guys? A, um, have you guys watched? Actually, I want to ask you something. The Nickelback. I wanna, yeah, I want to <laughs> ask you about Nickelback. Is uh, <laughs> yeah. I I had a someone this weekend was I felt like they were trolling me, asking me for Nickelback. Now, I do. Would you play Nickelback at a club? Um, I don't know if I'd play like the straight up song per se, but I don't, I don't know. You probably noticed I've been making these stupid mashups that I, so I can play certain songs in the club. Um, I might, uh, work on some Nickelback stuff just because I was getting Creed requests and that's why, that's why I ended up making that Swedish house mafia mashup of Creed and, you know, trying to find ways to play some of this stuff without like completely like killing the vibe with a rock song not that it yeah. would because i think the places i play i know people will sing along to the song if i just play the original but i just don't i'd rather just keep the vibe going of what we're already playing yeah. uh no one's requested nickelback yet at an actual like at a club but i've definitely gotten the request at um 
you know, at weddings, which is fine. Okay. I'm just curious if it's a troll or if it's like a I don't think real it is. request. Yeah. I don't think it is. Cause so I brought up Nickelback because they have a documentary on Netflix now that after I had streamed one night, I was just like, you know what? I don't want to go to sleep yet. Let me watch this documentary. And it was actually really good because it showed how, where they came from, from like, you know, a bait, you know, starting off as like kids essentially and you know the ups and downs of their career so and how they're like you know kind of like creed and limp biscuit on this like comeback tour now so i think yeah like I, I think the music is just so bad right now that people are going back to those generations you know like whatever it's 2010s or 2000s and you know that's what you know the bars the clubs the weddings that's for the most part what everyone's requesting these days right right I'll, I'll, i'm gonna go watch that I'm interested. It's, it's really good. I mean, I don't yeah. like if you have time, it's it's definitely good. I and Fuse just went to a concert. You went saw the Food Fighters. Oh. Oh yeah, I did. I went on Thursday. It was good. It was um Yeah, that's right. I felt I was it was my third time seeing them. Uh the first time since Taylor, their drummer, passed. And uh it was a good show. Dave like really always gives it his all up there, which makes it, you know, good. But I will say this show, like it just kind of lacked a little bit of like the carefreeness. I feel like that Taylor and him, that chemistry they had, because, you know, Dave didn't come basically off the guitar, you know, and lead like the whole night. Whereas like every other time I've seen him, you know, he's done a little drum solo or like, you know, uh, I don't know. They played a little more covers where, you know, they kind of did this like when he introduced like all the band, they did this like quick um, like cover medley, like each guy did like a thing. And that was pretty much it of the covers, which I mean, it's cool. <laughs> I like all their music and they put on a good show, but um, it was just not uh, I feel like the same. Yeah, yeah. yeah but you, I, I mean, also you've seen them before, so you know what right. to compare it to. Right. And, and I also got screwed over by StubHub. So that's a whole story, oh, no. too. <laughs> yeah. So we were out front of the the venue, which was at the ballpark. And we went to scan the tickets and they were like, these tickets, they don't work there. You have to go to the box office. And then the box office like, well, technically, this show was like a non um, transferable ticket show. So um, nobody was supposed to be able to sell tickets, you know, oh, secondhand wow. tickets. So then I'm on the phone with StubHub for an hour and. And, you know, it's somebody on like a, you know, a call call center. So it was very difficult and um, ended up buying a second set of tickets. Luckily, the box office had some open and that's what we got. Wow. We how we ended up going in. So are they going to return? Those? Yeah, Were you SOL on that or? Uh, that? Well, I, I feel like I, um, I just disputed the charges from Amex. Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> because <laughs> <I'll do it. laughs> yeah. <laughs> I that, I'm waiting on that, but that's I was like, you know what? After all, the, I already talked to StubHub enough. Like I was over it. What's crazy is the day before the concert, when, when I got the tickets and they sent it to like your StubHub account, I was like, these tickets don't seem like like other tickets I've gotten through here before. So I called them and was like, hey, are these legit? Like I, they just don't seem normal um, because instead of like being like a downloadable ticket to the app it was like a link that opened up and mm. I thought that was weird. And they were like, yeah, this, this is legit. These are the tickets for the show. And then it was like, come to find out. No, nope. <laughs> they're, they're always supposed to have somebody on site. I thought, right. StubHub is supposed to have an actual uh, representative on site for shit like this. Yeah. Uh, that was like their whole uh, thing that they did to get around all that. So interesting. Yeah, it was annoying, but we ended up going in and it was all good. So um, before we move any further, I just want to give a quick shout out to our sponsors. Um, Drew and I are um, doing a hackathon. Well, actually, it happened yesterday, if you're listening to this, um, when it comes out. And um, we are on a hackathon the last uh, Tuesday of every month. And... Um, you can use the promo code DAFS, D-A-F-S. That'll get you 50% off your first three months or 30% off an annual plan at Crate Hackers. If you haven't checked out Crate Hackers yet, um, you can use that promo code, like I said. And um, we do the hackathons once a month. Also, Go back, listen to that, check it out. You can find the playlists as well 
inside of their app. So make sure to go check them out. Yeah. And some of the, the videos are live on YouTube still of past ones that we've done. So if you enjoy like these music episodes, like we're doing here today, you can go and check out some of those past uh, crate hackers hackathons. Also real quick, if you use the promo code drew and show, it'll get you 30% off your first month at directmusicservice.com. So that takes care of our sponsor stuff for today. Moving forward, Drew, what did you want to do next? Here? We're doing uh, tech tips. Um, and I have a little tech tip, uh, and then, uh, but we're going to go with flips as first. So let's play our video, and then uh, we're going to get into these tech tips. It's great. Love hearing uh, that. <laughs> All right, Flips. What's uh, what's your tech tip for the kids these days? Uh, so my tech tip is, uh, I guess, for wedding DJs, and that's to work on going like battery battery powered for your ceremonies. So I I know a lot of people use the Everse Eight. I use the JBL Eon One MK Two as my speaker. Uh, that is because you can act, it's a column speaker, column array speaker, where you can actually um, put the tops of the columns into the back of the speaker. So you can actually carry it with one hand and not have to carry a stand or a second speaker. And then on top of that, I have a Omni Charge Portable bout Battery Power brick which is about the size i think on my notes i put it's the size of a crunch wrap supreme so it, uh, it's pretty big or you know sorry it's like about that big maybe a little smaller and it actually fits in my rack case for my uh mics and my little mackie mixer and i run uh, a couple qlxd mics and it powers that probably can power it for about two or three ceremonies uh can run you know and then you run the mixer into the uh, JBL Eon One MK2, and I don't need any tables. The um, the rack mount that I have, I can put like my uh, iPad on top, my uh, iPod or iPhone, whatever I'm using. So it has its own little table, and it's you know not intrusive, and you know I can just kind of pick it up and go, and I can set up for a ceremony, you know, in under five minutes. Yeah. So that's my tech tip. I agree with it. Uh, me and Flips go back and forth all the time on, hey, did you you tried this out? You tried this out. Um, <laughs> did you end up getting that SLXD5? Um, I did. I did. Started. And I've used it once, and I, I was texting with you about it. It was great. I didn't was getting no drop um, bars on it. Uh, maybe it was would maybe go to four out of five like yeah. every now and then, but it was far. It was outside. Um, the second one I got actually had posted about it on, uh, one of the, the, the DJ help group. Um, the display didn't turn on, but, uh, Ben Stowe's taking care of it. Um, he's checking with shore okay. and, um, it's, it's brand new. So I don't, I don't see why it shouldn't be under warranty, but definitely we'll get actually probably like two more of the receiver boxes just to have as backups and, you know, to honestly run, maybe have the options to run like two wireless speakers maybe four depending on where i'm at uh you know I, I love technology so i'm happy i was able to talk to you about that and you know being able to power them by USB-C is pretty dope too yeah i'm always looking for a new uh wireless speaker and that one s seems to be the the hot little topic right now yeah um, yeah so and i love your ceremony idea i do use the everse 8 with that um uh, <clears throat> so you can go full battery um, but yours, that's a great solution for you and get that little battery pack. Yep. Um, my technology, my tech tip here is, uh, you know, about a lot, a lot of group threads or just emailing with DJs and DJs not filling in their, uh, their contact forms. <laughs> and it might sound silly, but, uh, it drives me fucking nuts. Uh, <laughs> all you guys have to do is go in to, um, open up your, your, um, uh, I guess your iPhone really just open up the, the phone app and you go to my card and on my card with the latest iPhone software, you're able to um, put in a picture, your, your phone, um, email, website, everything that somebody would want from you. And so if you call somebody new, it's going to say, this might be Drew Pierce. If you um, are out and about and you don't have a phone, uh, a, 
a business card. You can use this as your business card to send somebody a link. And um, to, it's just to get 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 the bubble picture to pop up. Though you actually have to have a photo on your Apple ID too. That's where a lot of people oh. miss too. Like if you don't have a photo on your Apple ID, so you can have a contact photo saved that when like you call pops up. But if you don't have a photo on your Apple ID saved, it won't uh, like show up in the text threads. All right. If you see me looking down, that's what I'm looking at right now. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, so once you get your poster going, um, there's a link inside that my card. It says contact photo and poster. Uh, basically, you can have it every time um, <clears throat> if someone doesn't know who you are, it'll ask to fill in all your stuff that way. If you're calling new people, they know who you are you're more likely to have a coordinator pick up because they're like, Oh, this is important. This is, this is probably Drew. Um, it just gives more people a heads up. So iPhone users out there, get there, uh, get that filled in, get your picture filled in, get your numbers filled in. Um, and yeah, I want to not be texting with you guys anymore <laughs> that don't have your, your pictures on it. Is mine showing up now? Yeah. You can see. Yep. Yeah, your picture, and uh, I was able to do with yours. Uh, you had your your name, so you could. Uh, I, I changed um, <clears throat> your company to DJ Flips, and then I okay company show. So when it texts me, it's it, it highlights your company as DJ Flips, but then I still have uh, your real name. Okay, sweet. So cool little tip. Um, I just think it really is beneficial for us people that are always calling and texting um, new clients and new people. So get on there, do that. Uh, Fuse, you got any tips for us or? Uh, tip one, be nice. Uh, end, <laughs> end of my tips. <laughs> Just the tip for Fuse. All right, we're going into music. Let's hit some music. <laughs> uh, we all got all different right. music picks here. Let's see. Um, well, let's see. I, I, I don't have a music video in here to play. I'll insert one now. Yo, Adrian. Wait, <laughs> I mean Drew and Fuse. You know, I get confused. I was hit in the head a lot by Ivan Drago. Anyways, it's Rocky here. Let's talk some music. I can't remember if they're rapid fire or not rapid fire. Anyway, I gotta go. Yeah? Yo, Adrian! I'm hungry! Perfect. <laughs> All right, so... <laughs> Um, I'm elaborating a little more today on what we talked about last night on Crate Hackers, um, which was a pool party. Uh, my first pick for today is going to be um, Mariah Carey, Dream Lover, the Jet Boot Jack remix. Uh, Jet Boot Jack is somebody I discovered a while back. They have a lot of good um, remixes. They're kind of like the Jack in House style. Um remixes um i play a lot of his stuff um i have a lot of these edits that are labeled sunshine sessions edits uh this is one of them i believe if it's not on dms um this one was probably in the daft's exclusive bootleg pack that we gave out but um just a fun uh up-tempo remix of uh the mariah carey dream lover so that's my first pick flips um, my first pick, um, so uh, my choices for this one are going to be requests or songs that I play at one of my gigs, which is Clarendon Ballroom. If you follow me, it's probably one of the only places that I post on my uh, reels or pictures. It's just a big room where you can play everything, T always a ton of people, but you can go pop, hip hop, EDM, mashups, everything. It's, it's a great room. Love playing there. Uh, my first one is uh, Cherub, Doses and Mimosas. Always get that request like pretty much every time I'm there. Uh, but I do play the Tiesto remix. And I actually made it, I, I want to say I made an edit and I put it in the DAFs group when it first oh, yeah. started. I so, play it, the hooks, hooks only. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a, pretty much the hooks only. There's a little hype in the beginning if you use that. That's the one I use. Uh, so yeah, if you're in the group, it's probably like, on all the way at the bottom because i think it was right when the group started but there is no clean version of this song and i don't think there can be a good clean version of it either just I, no i have a i have a clean version of it <laughs> if would, you want is, it is it just blanked out or yeah 
it's not as good. No, right. definitely that, not. that's what I mean. So it's like, well, it's one of those songs where if they blank it out, it just doesn't sound good. I don't know. For all the, like, yeah, that's like, it, exactly. <laughs> that's, it. <laughs> that's exactly what it is. And I'm just like, so, you know, it's funny. Cause I, I'll get that request too at weddings and I'm like, are you cool with the dirty version? And they're like, yes, just, just play it when all like all the, like, Oh, it's funny because I say grown ups, but it were grown ups at this point now too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, just our parents and aunts and uncles. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I have no problem playing it. I love playing it, and uh, you know, happy to play requests. You know, at, at these gigs. That's one of those where I feel like most people don't even realize what they're saying. They're just like, meh. You know, like <laughs> they don't even pay attention. Um, <clears throat> my picks for this week is I'm just going, uh, just new hot shit. And the first one I'm going to pick is, I mean, <clears throat> I don't even know if this is hot. I just, I just kind of like it. Is uh, Anderson Pack and Gwen Stefani, the Hello World. It's the Olympics official Olympics song. So I'm sure the, over the next couple of weeks, it's just going to be buried in everybody's mind. But it's catchy. Um, I just like Anderson Pack. It's amazing, and Gwen's on it. So yeah, it's sing along, catchy. I think it's going to. <clears throat> definitely just be overplayed for the next couple of weeks. So good little summer hit right there. Nice. What's the BPM on it? Um, what was it? Isn't that his like range of 110, 112 type stuff that he does? Um, I just downloaded it. I heard it last night. So let's see. I don't even, I just downloaded mm -hmm. it today. That sounds and like a like, good duo though, you know? Yeah. Here, let's see. They can make something funky. <clears throat> It is, I want to say it was 115. No, 122. Oh, that's mm. good. Nice. Um, my next pick is, uh, it's just a vibe, Dad. I'll never forget that when we uh, when we were riding around in the car and I asked Drew's daughter why she liked this song. It was just, it's just a vibe, Dad. And it's <laughs> Steve Lacey, Bad Habits. Uh, uh, <laughs> but I'm playing the Disco Lines uh, remix. Uh, for a pool party it's it's a fun up tempo remix nice. <clears throat> that is uh that, they love the lyrics on that <clears throat> oh it's uh um we we like the message dad and i'm like okay <laughs> sure whatever yeah. uh, <laughs> um i don't even know how that song goes anymore i banned it from the car because i couldn't fucking stand it they played it <laughs> they played it so much but uh i know it's i know it was big on it was massive on tiktok so i'm sure I have to reintroduce it. I'll, look, I'll download that one. Yeah, the disco lines is a good a good version. Be good for like bungalow. Yeah. All right. Flips. Uh, my next one is uh, DJ Cassidy and Alex Newell. I think that's how you say uh, the person's name, the singer's name. It's Kill the Lights. Uh, I play the OG version and also the Audion remix. Um, I was getting the Audion remix on a lot of uh, wedding requests actually too. And then um, started to get a notice that a lot of people were requesting it at my gigs. Uh, I do like the original version because it is a little more of that like disco house feel where you can, mm. you know, or newer new disco where you can mix it in with like Dua Lipa and stuff like that in that in that range of like that one twenties. Uh, but the Audion remix, I'll mix that in kind of like if I do let it go like the disco remix, I'll mix in the audio. I probably need to just make an edit and just yeah. have it go in so that way you get the normal dance part and then the drop on the audience remix later on right right um the new uh this is this is apparently this new hot shit right now is uh sung uh by adam port and about 18 other people that <laughs> are on this track called uh move uh it's trending on a lot of charts it's kind of afro afro beat afro housey um but yeah, getting a ton of requests for this and there's some great remixes, but the remixes take a little bit out of the, uh, the Afro, Afro beat, Afro house part out of it. So just depending where you're going to play and what remix you're going to grab, but um, you know, my kid knows it and I'm getting a ton of requests for it. So it must be trending. So there you go. It's funny. My, my Spotify started playing in my car after I listened to that song the next song that played, you know how like Spotify will just like start playing songs that are like other songs. The yeah. next song that played after that was the chain smokers that addicted their like newer single they released. And I was like, Oh, those kind of do like have a similar little vibe. So, 
which is funny. Um, my next pick is, um, and still going with the pool party theme here, uh, Florence and the Machine, You Got the Love, the Zillionaire remix. Um, really like this remix. It's just like a fun piano house uh, version of that track. And um, not too hard, not too um, kill the energy, uh, just a good vibes. She's big, and it's a... It's a big thing uh, <clears throat> a lot of girls know and will sing along to, and I think it's a good way to just get out of the generic Rihanna's and all the the regular ones that we play, you know? Yeah. New so artist. Is Zil- wait, is Zillionaire the person that's also two other people? Yeah. Or is that someone else? Tiger yeah. Toast and Dollar Cub. Dollar Cub, Dollar Bear, Tiger Toast, and Zillionaire, all the same person. But but they're not but it's not burnout, right? No, no it's not burnout. Burnout's a no. new one. Moon Moonlight, yeah. that's another one, new one. Uh, yeah. Those are all different people, right? They're people, all different least, people. <laughs> as far yeah. as we know, they're all different people. Yes. Lo- I'm, I mean, I'm loving all these edits that are coming out. Same. The, yeah. you know, the, just the houseier versions of all the top 40 songs. Well, yep. it's just like they 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 they're like making them sound a little more current. Sometimes you right. want to throw in one of those older songs, and you're like, "Oh, it just doesn't fit with how I'm playing right now. It just sounds so." Yeah, dated. no, they're they're great for uh, all all types of gigs. To be honest, like right. early, you know, whether it's um, like a, a corporate gig or you know in stores, background music type stuff. But then you can still play them at your bars and you know clubs and weddings, which is great. Yep, I agree. I really like Marshall uh, Simon stuff too. Yeah, <laughs> stuff's been good. Mar- Marshall's, uh, Marshall's, been, Marshall's been making. Some oh good yeah. Stuff. Have he, you have you guys ever had him on the show? No. Oh man, we haven't. We need to reach out to him. I uh, should. I did have a little bit of dialogue with him, and I just um, we were changing a bunch of things around. So um, I need to reach out to him. We have a couple get, people. Yeah. With, uh, he his advertising is really good. He's uh, it's he's everywhere. These. Yeah, yeah. It's everywhere. I was I was like I didn't realize you could advertise your own remixes, and I really like how he's 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 pushing it. It's an and, interesting. And it, yeah, technique. and he'll get you gigs in whatever city. <laughs> yeah, he, he he does uh he does bookings too through his company. Okay. All right. Uh, cool. my next one is uh this bootleg by Jay Bia. I just came across it because um. I was getting requests for Cotton Eye Joe, and I was trying to find a good way to play it. Really? Uh, but it, it's it's Cotton Eye Joe, and it goes into that Knock Two song that like everyone knows. But the reason why I like it too is how I play it. Um, whenever I play Timber, because I do love Kesha, um, on the outro of the Timber edit that I play, I think it's the prime time edit. Uh, it goes into an instrumental, like after the chorus and all that stuff, then it's an instrumental outro. That's when I'll mix in the Cotton Eye Joe. It's essentially like an acapella over that. So it kind of has that like country theme, high energy dance going. But what yeah. I realized that some of the places I'm playing is that one, I didn't realize Cotton Eye Joe was like this big, like line dance thing. So we do have a younger group or, you know, younger crowd that does come out to the, to clarinet ballroom and, half the people start dancing to it. You know, it's one of those crowds that it's great because they, they interact to pretty much everything you play. If it's a, the Dougie, if it's Sheck West, if it's EDM with big drops, they'll react to everything. It's, it's such a great room. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of how I play it. And then it go, and then, you know, it's maybe like a minute, minute and a half of Cotton Eye Joe. And then it goes right into the drop. It like builds up into the drop. It just doesn't happen, but uh, it's great at it. I've been playing it pretty often. So, um, is it my turn? Yeah, it is. My turn is <clears throat> I'm going to do this uh, Saweetie Nani, the Wookiee remix. Uh, it's been trending on DMS, and, um, you know, I like it. It's good. Cool. It's a little... Sweetie Nani, the Wookiee remix. Yeah. Cool. Say He's that 10 times fast. Too. Yeah. <laughs> Sweetie, the Nani, the Wookie. Yep. Can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> can't do it. Um, my next pick is John Newman. Love me again. Um, the HMC edit got this one off HMC. Really liked this bootleg edit, whatever the kids are calling it these days. It's an, uh, I think this one's a few years older, but it still sounds kind of current. Um, 
Um, and yeah, I think it's good for a pool party. So that is my pick. John Newman, love me again, HMC edit. Sweet. All right. My next uh, pick is One Direction, What Makes You Beautiful, the Dave, how do you say it? Aude remix, A U D E. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the Dave Aude remix, um, One Direction's been killing. That is the one song that I do play a lot more of. Uh, it, you know, the age, like I said, the age ranges that are people that are going out, that's a lot of the stuff that they love too, on top yep. of whatever big EDM stuff is. Uh, but I did make an edit that goes from that into levels. I have a couple different edits where it goes into either levels or uh, heads will roll. Uh, but I have it where on the chant, if you know the song it, where they goes, na, 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 yep. na, 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 that is where the synths come in on either song. So levels, na, 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 na and kills literally every time. <clears throat> Every part, every person gets thrown up. They're just like, ah, like minds are blown every time yeah. just because they love One Direction, but then they hear One Direction and levels. <laughs> but you know, it's one of those things where you know, just got to keep them on their toes. You guys know, and yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's a good segue into EDM from pop. Yep, and then then you can start playing your top forty EDM stuff for a little bit. Yeah, that you're speaking of that age group, and if you guys aren't already doing it, I'm. Hannah Montana and Hillary Duff yep. also are just just, <laughs> We're just getting there. wiping the floor. They're so big. Oh, I, I didn't I didn't look at your list. I'm sorry. No, you're good. No, it's all good. <laughs> um, my next one is uh, Paramore, ain't it fun? Tommy Marini bootleg, and it um, it goes. I don't know what parts are what. It's too different. It's kind of like a Frankenstein. It goes into the Wookie remix at the end. But I've been playing it all weekend and even getting requests for Paramore, and it's been blowing yep. it up. Paramore has just been killing for me every every gig, emo gig to regular clubs to everywhere. So I love this bootleg. I did one <laughs> of uh, ain't no fun. Wait, no, was it ain't no fun? Well, ain't it fun? Ain't it fun? Ain't it fun? Yeah. I did one of ain't it fun over uh, break my soul by Beyonce. Oh, okay. that's cool. yeah, yeah, it works. I'll, I'll send it yeah. to you guys if you want it. Yeah, um, yeah please. Yeah, I, please. I, yeah, just when you're in that like early housey vibes and it just the first verse, chorus, and then obviously yep. the chant that everyone knows, and then you can mix out of it. Yep. Um, fuse. Uh, let's see here. Uh, going back to me, uh, this is another older Joe Maz edit that came out right, maybe like right before. The COVID stuff shut down, but I love this edit, especially for like a pool party. But it's Pendulum, um, Calvin Harris, and Dombreski, and it's like what this is what you came for slash the island, um, and uh, it's just a good um, remix of the two into one kind of track. I know that's kind of like a thing right now where people are making edits with like two songs in yeah. one edit. Um, which I'm here for at some points. And then some parts I'm like, no, I want to play them as two separate songs. Like, but, um, <laughs> but I like that residencies. one. It's good for residencies. I'm finding cause it's an easy way to change it up. But I do find myself like on the longer shifts, like, fuck, I want to play it. I need both songs. I don't have, right. I can't just right. like play a one minute of this and get through a five hour set. You know, <laughs> mm-hmm. that's, that's, a, that's like the no hands and levels mashup. It's right. Like, no, I want no hands for no hands. Yes. <laughs> levels for levels. Like I need I need them separate. Yeah. Right. Yep. Um but yeah, that was good uh good one. Uh, back to you, Flips. All right. So, going back to what Drew was saying about like uh Miley Cyrus or Hannah Montana and you know, uh Hillary Duff and you know, even I think no one intended even catching even Steve's show that you guys had a couple, you know, a couple shows ago, you know, even he brought it up and then seeing some of his like posts and what, what he's been playing. I was like, and requests that have come in too from weddings where, where they're requesting a lot of Hannah Montana and like stuff from TV shows. And my thing was to find ways to play it where it wasn't really just the original and just like to keep the vibe going. So mine is, Hillary Duff, what dreams are made of, but I've made two different edits. Uh, one is a mashup blend over titanium. 
and that's been killing. So I'll play like maybe the original t- Titanium and then go into that. So they're just like, oh shit, you know. And then I um, also made one over Sweet Dreams, the Joe Maz remix, because he's awesome and sent the instrumental with the uh, with his remix. So he yeah. did both. Um, so I tried it over that, and depending on the vibe of what I'm playing at the time, um, you know, I guess Titanium is more of that like what is it like more progressive pop house edm yeah. whereas the sweet dreams joe maz is in that what it what is it, tech house i don't know if it's tech house but you know it's, it's got a different drop yeah and, uh so mm-hmm. i made two different edits uh depending on uh where i'm at in my set when i want to drop it but yeah i'm those kind of songs it's sing-alongs girls are always singing along to it i don't care what if the guys are or not if they do great but as long as the girls are having fun then that's the stuff that Honestly, I think helps them remember like, whoa, this was a dope DJ. I can't believe he's playing this. Right. Those are like the surprise moments now, I think, at least in my sets is like dropping some of these tracks. Right. Yeah, even a uh, high school musical. Um, yep. I, I I heard it was been killing it. Uh, yes. Yeah, send that over. I'd love to check those out. <clears throat> yeah. Got you guys. Um, my next pick here is Charlie XCX has been getting a billion and one requests for for me at my my younger um my younger club and 360 is the big one i actually really like this um when it was on dms dj z dna bootleg um it's mellow but we need more are going to come out here shortly haven't seen them yet but um yeah it's dope um her i'm all of her new albums getting requested yeah um, we'll, she's we'll the new bad what, bunny <laughs> she's the new bad bunny all the girls i'm serious a couple like, the other night. Past, yeah. my past two or three gigs have been um people have brat on their fa- on yep. their phone now which yep. means charlie xcx or um yeah or i'm getting the message for charlie xcx and pretty much and they'll be like anything yeah uh the one big song i think that it's gonna blow up is probably apple i think it's called okay and that is a TikTok song that, or a song that's blowing up on TikTok. Yep, it's Apple. Um, <clears throat> okay. Yeah. That, I, I'd look I that played one. the other two. I, I played Girls So Confusing, and I also played Von Dutch. And yeah. they're, all, they're all killing. They're good. So uh, she's, she's going to be big. I played that 360 bootleg this weekend, like all three nights as well. Just kind of earlier in the night. But, yeah. you know, I think it was good um honorable mention or we can go into our rants um i don't <clears throat> let's just go to the rant all right, yeah, all right. Rant. Let me, that's cool uh let me play this video <laughs> and we'll get into our rants hey true and fuse peter griffin calling in i want to hear what really grinds dj's gears you know, besides from bad bunny requests from a phone or DJ stealing custom mashups of YMCA and Macarena and using it on their own TikToks. Hey, this week's guest, what grinds your gears? Uh, all right. Who's got? Who wants to go first? I, I don't have a rant this week, or I probably do, but. I haven't been feeling too hot today, so I oh, just no. don't have the energy to 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 let something bother me that much. <laughs> Drew, why don't All you right. go and then I can close it out? Uh, actually, you go first. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm still thinking of mine. I, I have eight thousand okay. of these written down, but I want to see which right. one has grinded my gears more today. So you go first. Okay. I don't. I don't. I don't remember what my last one was. Uh, it could. It might actually be the same, but we'll add on to it. So. My rant is uh, DJs that go and visit their DJ homies at their gigs. If you're going to take videos of them, the, oh, sorry, my rant is what makes me mad is the friend that comes up, takes the video, posts it, says you're killing it, pans to the bar and it's empty. <laughs> or, there's, or there's like two people in the bar sitting at the bar, not doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> I know you know what I'm talking about. It makes me mad every time. Like, don't post that or don't post anything. Don't. Or if you want to make it look better, do a panning video of me DJing and saying I'm killing it. But it's the ones where it's like there's an ulterior motive on that. Like, 
You know what I mean? I feel like there's a, so then that brings me to the DJ friend that comes out and what are they doing there? Are they really there to support you or are they there to try to get a gig at the place that you're playing? When I go out, I'm actually there. I, you know, I love going out uh, lately just because my gigs end a little bit earlier if it's a wedding. So if I have time, I'll go see some homies and see where they're playing at. Probably someplace I already play at. But when I go there, you know, I, I like to take dope videos of them with the crowd in the background or at least of them making it making it look good. I think if you're going to go out and support your friends, go there in support of them. Like don't get in on stage or in the DJ booth and just stand there and play on your phone looking bored. <laughs> I would rather have my friends not show up. I would rather have DJs not show up to my gigs if you're going to ask, you know, ask to be up there, ask to be in the DJ booth. Go get drinks, go make sure I'm good. Here's my phone. I'll give it to you. Take some videos for me and make sure they look good because that's what I would do for you. If you're not going to do that, don't even show up. Don't get on stage. Like you're just wasting space. And I'd rather have a group of girls dancing behind me that at, that it's probably going to make their night versus a bunch like four or five DJ guy friends that are just going to stand there trying to find who the owner is or who can book them at the gig. <laughs> um <laughs> But yeah, don't stand there. DJs, don't stand there. Don't play on your phone. If you're going to take videos, take good videos. I hate, like I said, I mean, this you know is making I mean. me like, laugh so much because I was just this Friday, this weekend, and, and I'll, names will leave, they'll stay off the thing. But I was tagged in a bunch of videos, and, and the video is like right when I'm getting started. So, like, yeah, no one's going yet. The, you know, it just seems like, everyone's standing around bored but then it's like oh drew's doing his thing and i'm like it looks like everybody's bored because i it, yeah. it's like 10 minutes in I, I just literally just started and so i'm dying because i was so annoyed i'm like i can't repost this shit right and then, and then they're like you know the, like, why don't you wait, wait the, posting the, that shit? the last one was the end of the night and everybody's going i'm like why the fuck are you why are you videoing the end of the night? Like <laughs> there was a billion times when everyone's going crazy. What, that, you didn't think to like pull the phone out during those moments. <laughs> yes. And so if you are going to take videos, of your friends on the good moments, take longer videos too, like 30 seconds, a minute, you can always cut down the best parts from a video, but you can't cut up or make a video longer Right. And always make sure the drops in there, people's hands in the air. If you're like I said, this is if you're gonna be a good person and take good videos of your friends, right? Longer videos are best. Make sure the drops in there. Don't cut it short. <laughs> hey, record. How about just record it in the camera app, edit it, and then post it up. <laughs> yeah, right? You don't need yeah. to do it all live yeah. where you have no control over it. Do yeah. That's hook your movie. homie a friend up hook it up that's a great rant i will either, tell you either help me out or don't show up <laughs> I, don't, I don't care if my dj friends are at my gigs i'll be honest i don't care yeah. i want to work i don't want to make sure you're okay make sure that i'm okay yeah right and the, neg and the negativity of just standing there on your phone also can i feel like pulls your energy down it does like are you guys having fun if you're not get off the stage yeah I want the I want the energy. I don't want to be like thinking like, uh, are they judging that this song? Are they not right. like it? they're just yeah. overthinking every little thing? So yes, I I totally agree. But yeah, that's my rant. I'm with you. <laughs> we're all we're also introverted though, so I do <clears throat> I understand when the when a DJ is there and like you're just introverted. You don't you don't mean it's hard to just be like oh the whole time hyping them up <laughs> you know at least smile or stand off the yes. stage yeah, yeah. <laughs> or tell me jokes or make fun of the make fun of somebody we're yeah, uh, smiling yeah, yeah. so we're all having just a good don't time. stand there just don't stand yeah there. yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's a I, I don't even have a rant today i actually don't but <laughs> i i loved yours so much that oh good that, Thank that, you. I, I that hit me Hit me well this weekend. <laughs> I, I think that it should help everyone out there. Like whether you're, whether you are the DJ or you're visiting your DJ friends. Like I watch all these videos that people are posting, you know, uh, you know, on everyone's stories. And I'm like, oh, that, that was a good video that, you know, that he reposted or why would, her, why would you post that? <laughs> like, 
and it, and it helps it the dj out years. like <laughs> it helps the dj out too because we're so busy i i don't mm -hmm. always have a chance to bring my phone out and you know film it and so from a different angle it's way better yes exactly you know and if it's empty and you want to post a picture that you're out seeing your buddy just just post a, a selfie with them or something yes you know? yes like you know? <laughs> with, with the wall in the background behind yes. the dj booth not not the empty <laughs> bar in the background <laughs> <laughs> out here visiting there's two people like <laughs> dancing <laughs> oh my god so good <laughs> that happens, laugh, really good. when there's two people on the dance floor and you say someone's killing it like, no no stop. um i uh you know, we'll, we'll attribute it to there's also why probably a lot of DJs um, Instagrams or social media is not very good. They they might not actually be realizing what they're doing. You know what I mean? Right. I, it's self-awareness. Yeah. Which a lot of people lack. self -awareness. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so it might have a lot to do with that. Um, <laughs> that's a good one, though. Um, that's all I got for today. You got yeah. anything else you guys want to throw in there? Uh, uh no i i think that's my rant you know I, that was one of those things that bothers me and you know you know me i'm on I'm, i post i'm on social media uh th yeah that's my rant oh i guess maybe if you if you do take videos of your friends move around don't just do like one video in one spot and not move like it's okay to walk around get pan you know like do this kind of stuff if you know if you're watching this on youtube or whatever like move around uh that's what makes a lot of these videos look a lot cooler for both of you guys you know and it it i think it resonates too with other people when they're like oh that's how i want my videos to look or or not look to be honest but like you know if you are going to take videos of your friends make them look cool zoom in zoom out like add a little more action just in case there isn't as much action be that guy on social media that's like flipping his phone up and down and like <laughs> exactly <laughs> get it get on the ground on the dance floor and <laughs> you guys know what i'm up. talking about you've seen the video oh, of the yeah. dude he's like doing the most out there yeah. to make the video look cool we, there's a guy that comes into my gig and does those all the time i've just for all the guests i've been starting to do that too is right you know, get in close to them. But my favorite videos are shots that get into the crowd and over the crowd's head yep. with the DJ in the background, ones. not just necessarily like over my shoulder, because I want people to see that, see a view of you, right? So yep. I, I like that out in the crowd looking up. That's uh, a great shot. one. That's a great one. You know, what's funny, like the last, my last gig at Clarendon mm -hmm. Ballroom, I actually paid uh, my sister to come out, can't come out, and I gave her my camera and my phone, and she was there for two and a half hours, just taking uh, pictures, taking videos. Um, you know, she's not, she wasn't doing anything that night, so it's extra money for her. Paid her a couple hundred bucks um, to just get footage of me, and she got a lot of great footage. But the one you just said is a great idea. And I'm probably gonna tell her, I'm like, Hey, you know, this Friday when I'm there, go out in the crowd and, you know, take video and, you know, I'll make sure yep. to like, whatever, mm -hmm. if there's a drop or hit the CO2 or whatever, you know, but that's a great idea too, to that kind of video would be dope. I actually had a photographer come this, um, last Friday and he was just there for the club and, you know, he had a nice camera and it's amazing how many girls will run up and want their picture taken uh, yeah. just because the photographer had it. So I, I had an idea. I was going to actually buy like a nicer used looking camera and just, you know, have a buddy or whatever, come out for some drinks and give him the camera and walk around and just take some videos and pictures. Yep. Not so much with your phone, but I feel like more people or are willing to jump in front of the camera if it looks a little bit more pro. That makes sense mm -hmm. versus, uh, yeah. Versus yeah, so like, I gave her one. Oh, yeah. I'm with the DJ, you know, and it's just yeah. your, your, like, your that's phone. That's weird. Like, yeah. Why are you, <laughs> why are you filming me with your fucking cell phone? But if you and have like, like a, like, <laughs> 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 they're doing the most, but if, but if you have a, a, a nicer one, I'm sure you can get them used cheap as fuck. Like yeah, an old yeah, Sony. Yeah. and technology you know, is so yeah. much better these days than before where, even uh, yeah. you know, three four hundred dollar Canon with the kit lens that it comes with is 
still going to be way better than, you know, someone coming up with their iPhone. Like, hey, the DJ wants pictures or. Right. Well, I'm telling you, this guy didn't even have to do it. He just kind of. In fact, just uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy whoever a vest, right? Just so they look like a hipster photographer. <laughs> and I'm going to be like, put this vest on, carry this camera around. You can get some chicks. I'll get you some drinks. <laughs> well, it's got to be a like a brown suede vest with like a oh, yeah. button, with a couple buttons over here, though. You know, here's a here's a plaid shirt and a brown suede vest. <laughs> put it on. They need a camera sling too. Like one of those, yeah. like, uh, like what, what are the, what yeah. the wedding people wear where it's like a, uh, like a tool <laughs> like it belt holds guns, the camera. Or it holds guns. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, what is that? <laughs> Put it over the top. Have it built oh, into the vest. It just oh, built into the, the hipster vest. Oh, and then like a page boy hat. You got to get them a page boy hat so that they go around. Dude. That might scare Money. them. That might scare the girls. <laughs> why, why are you wearing that hat? <laughs> Oh, so many ideas here. My brain's cooking. Uh, well, I think that is going to wrap for today. Before we jump off flips, do you want to tell uh, any uh, plug anything or anything that you want to say? Um, yeah, sure. If you are, if you're not already following me, follow me at DJ Flips at DJ P as in Paul H L I P Z. My name is DJ Flips. It's not Phillips. It's one syllable, so <laughs> that really grinds my gears also. <laughs> it's been flips for 20-plus years. It's never changed. Yeah. My real name is Chris. It's not Phil. <laughs> I get that a lot now. And I'm like, I've been Chris for 40-plus years. <laughs> it's on my website. <laughs> that, oh, sorry, that's another thing that grinds my gears. It's when someone that wants to do business says my name wrong <laughs> or says a different name, and I'm like, you didn't do your research and you, I take a lot of this stuff seriously because it's like going into an interview with like, you know, a job. If, you mm -hmm, know, if, right. you, if you tell Coca-Cola that, you know, whatever, say their name wrong or whatever, whatever company, you know, like it doesn't, it's not just me. It's like, if you say someone's name wrong, you obviously right. didn't do that. All you had to do was get their name right. Right. And that just that for me is just that much more respect. I'm like, okay, I never met you before. You got my name right. You know it's not Phil. You know it's Flips, etc. So it's Flips. If I see you out and you say it differently, I might just walk away because I'm at this point. Yeah. I'm like, ah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, if you haven't been to any of my sites, I actually have like a one link now that goes to like my DJ site, my wedding site, my mix cloud, and I thought this was actually pretty cool. It's a uh, dancingwiththedj.com. It was available. I'm running with it. And it's easier for me to say that than djflips.com because uh, then I have to spell it out for them. And it's done, It's not spelled like a easy way, like F-L-I-P-S. So now I can tell people dancingwiththedj.com. Yep. Hopefully <clears throat> that you know sits with them. If not, then I just give them my QR code that's like on my phone. That's what I do. So if you have your phone... I have a QR code that's like right there. I don't know if you can see it, but yeah, I have it right on, have it right it. on yep. my screen. So that way I have uh, availability at all times if someone's asking for like my number or email or something like that. <clears throat> but if you have your uh, my card filled out on your iPhone, Ooh. then you can also send share that with them. Uh, you can't just, I'm pretty sure you can just uh, hold it up to it and it'll transfer. That, oh, really? Like, yeah. Just, is it like tip to tip? <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, it's one of those those <laughs> those uh, apps that had everyone out. Just the tips. So there you go. <laughs> um, well, this has been awesome, dude. I appreciate you. I, no, I thank always, you for uh, having me. I always hit you up for all kinds of ideas, and it's always great having you on. I appreciate, yeah, appreciate it. it. I, li I listen to the show all the time. It was awesome to hear. Uh, recently, uh, Simo was last week, right? Yeah. I'm an indie dance DJ because of Simo, so. I think we all are. I think, I think we all are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. The well, yeah, Fuse, all feel right. better, man. I, I, you know, Thanks. I, I appreciate better. it. Yeah. <clears throat> Until next time, that's going to be it for today. We'll see you next Wednesday. <laughs>